I told you this backstage, but I did, I did finally see your show on Sunday. Um, and I'm curious, because I imagine that not everyone in this room has seen it. And by show, I mean ABBA Voyage, which we got the, a, a teaser of. Um, can you explain what the show is and what the origins of it are? I think it's, I start with the origins. origins. Uh, it was... Uh, it was from the beginning, it was a little bit of it. It came from Tupac in 2012 when he performed at Coachella. And then eventually um, Michael Jackson did a Billboard Award as holograms, you know. And it started like that. And then uh, we brought in, you know, the, we brought in um, the producers, Svana Gisla and Ludwig Anderson, and together with the creative director, Bailey Walsh and ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, that's the company George Lucas, George Lucas started yeah, yeah. to do the Star Wars. They started to create a thing that you know we really didn't know if it was going to work. You know, this was you know a big, big risk project, but they eventually you know, made it into something special we could present because you know it was a big investment, and I was together with another guy who was responsible for taking in the money. So together with it was a big responsibility because we when you say big investment, how big are we talking? Yeah, north between 100. 100, 200 million dollars, you know, something like that, you know, and um, and it really, you know, no one has done it before. Will it work? Uh, but we were convinced, you know, at, you know, you take a big risk on this, and um, then you know we brought in the money, and uh, mainly Swedish, you know, family offices and some pension funds and others, and Universal Music. They believed in it, in us, but it wasn't until you know four weeks before. I went into the, they called me and said, Per, can you come into the arena? We would build it, you know, our tailor-made arena for the show. And um, so I went in there and they started, they showed me two songs on the screens. And um, there was visitors, I think it was Leo in Love on Me. And I started to cry because I just realized this is going to work, you know. And that was really a, a super, I get goosebumps right now talking about it because it was like, then I realized that this could actually, this could actually be something fantastic. You mentioned, you mentioned the arena. What is distinct about the arena? I mean, if, if for those who haven't been, there are, these, you know, there are lights that course up and down yeah. the side, and there's, there's like a hundred, what, how many different uh, technical devices are there on the roof? I mean, it's <laughs> thousands, but I can say it's, so we need to build a uh, you know, tailor-made arena because it's 600 tons of equipment in the roof. So you, you need to have that, so you create the illusion that really it's, the arena is, twice as big as it really is. And that's really what the creative team has successfully done. You know, it's just, if you haven't been there, you know, it's, uh, you should go. And um, it, I can promise you a fantastic time. And, if, you know, and, and hopefully this is, will stay for a long, long time here in London. Now, you, you mentioned Michael Jackson um, and Tupac, which were sort of the early experiments in the hologram technology. But yeah. my sense from talking to people about this show is they, get very upset if you describe it as a hologram. Yeah. So what is the difference between the holograms and what people see there, which I guess are avatars? Yeah. You know, I mean, a hologram, you know, is just, you can just see it from one place, and you see it on one specific site on the, on the screen. It's just, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, they project through a, um, a gla not glass, but a plastic folio almost, and then you see a person projected in the room, or a, a band. But you can't do so much about it. And it's fascinating for maybe one, two songs, but for a 90-minute concert, it doesn't really work, you know? And that was, you know, the, actually Bjorn Benny and uh, Ludwig, the son of, uh, the producer and son of Benny, they, we, we went to, to uh, Las Vegas and saw the Michael Jackson Cirque du Soleil show. And they didn't ra like it at all. You know, it was one song there, which is, um, uh, that is um, with the hologram. And we, it, what we've done now with Industrial Light, Ma Light and Magic, uh, it's really something special. It's really something that is, the, the illusion is that everyone believes that ABBA is there and everyone celebrates like ABBA is there. They are on course from the audience and it's, you have to see it. You have to go there and I can promise you a fantastic night out. So how long do you have the investment, which I think was reported at the time at, I don't know, around $150 million. Mm -hmm. um, how long until you make that back? We thought it was going to take, uh, I mean, three, four years. Uh, but, you know, it just depends on how we do this now because we want to extend it and uh, take it to other places in the world. Um, but, you know, it's, I would say right now we have sold 1.8 million tickets, which is way <laughs> above, you know, the expectation where we would be right now. So it's doing well, 
what's the, the average ticket price? I can't go into that because, you know, but it's, you can see on the website, so then you can do your math yourself. Got it. I think when we spoke earlier this year, it was like, I don't know, $100, something like that. Something like that. Um, but I will say my ticket was more expensive than that, so I don't know <laughs> if you're raising the prices. As no, you it's, know. you know, the revenue management, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, um, what are some of the other places you'd want to take the show? I mean, we have questions from all over the world because everyone that sees it sees that we want to do this. We, we really want to take ABBA too. And then we talk about them that you need to build an arena and you know that, oh, well, that's, they realize that it costs a lot of money. And uh, then they hesitate a little bit, but you know, we, we again, you know, this is something that is so outstanding. I don't say it's uh, going to you know, replace live, but it's a new vertical in live music. And we have interest from all over the world. I mean, every part of the world is uh, asking us, and we are in talks with, deep talks with at least four different cities right now. For the, for the ABBA show? For the, I mean, it's a hard drive. I mean, the ABBA can perform, you know, in four places the same night, you know? Right. They, and they don't need a rider or anything. So it's, you know, they, they, they don't, don't, I mean, you yeah. know. But it, it was, you know, when, when, when we recorded this in Stockholm for four weeks, just just before, you know, in the February 2020, before COVID started. I mean, it was really that, it was almost that we couldn't do it because when you, in the, in the face, you have 13 muscles. And I wouldn't see if you were different because I don't know you that well, but if my, my wife, ex-wife, I would say, would see me, she would see there's something wrong with me if I didn't have all that in place, my muscles. So to do that, you have to shave. And since Benny hasn't shaved since he was 18, and Bjorn, there is a, especially Bjorn said, I don't, I don't want to do that, I don't, I don't want to shave. But without that, we can't get the real thing out of you. And eventually he shaved off, you know. Shaved for that. Yeah, shaved for that, you know. That was, that was a drama, no, it wasn't a drama, but it was, it was fun, yeah. Do you, what, what is the rehearsal for that like, or what is the, rec the, the motion capture that they do? What they do, I mean, they are, I mean, they, are, I mean, they do their moves, they recorded, 25 songs in a special venue in Stockholm and uh, with motion cap suits and uh, yeah and that, that's what they did you know together with it was 100 people from from ILM sitting it looked like NASA you know they're sitting with computers and they have helmets and they have it's like it's, it's like fantastic and then we have body doubles doing the, the dances and the movements so that's it's that's really you see that it, it, it is 28 years old people you know doing the show Right. Because you, if you, when you're 70 plus, you can't really do that kind of moves that you will see, you know. <laughs> but an, as an avatar, you can. Yeah. yeah. And the, so the, the, the body is of essentially of a 28-year-old, the voice also of a 28-year-old? No, the voice is from the real abbas as they are today. Yeah. But I think with AI, you can, you know, you can skew it down to when they were 28 using their original voices. Have you used AI at all? No. I mean, it depends what you call AI. I saw a little bit of what Roy talked about earlier, and I think it was quite interesting because it's more like, you know, what is AI, you know, or as Apple in their, in their keynote speech this in September, they never used the word AI. They talked about machine learning all the time because I think that some people are so afraid of AI today, artificial intelligence, so they don't even want to talk about it. So I think it's, a, and what Roy explained, it's a lot of things that is artificial intelligence. Right. It's like a calculator, you know. Have you given much thought? Because you obviously you do you do much more than just the, the ABBA show. Mm. As to what you think the impact of, of AI will be on the music business and your business, and how you account for that? I, th I think it's quite interesting. I think that uh, what is a synthesizer? You know, if we say, I mean, if you if you only can play piano but nothing else, with the synthesizer you can play trumpet, you can play you know a violin, you can play any instrument. And, you know, I, I signed, when I was at Universal, since that's where I was before I started Pop House, I signed Avicii 2010. And he couldn't play an instrument. He was, a, he was a World of Warcraft geek, you know. He was playing, you know, computer games, and his mother and father was just, oh, please, you have to go to school, you know. And, but he was just playing that. And then he downloaded, I know now there was illegally downloaded a, a software called Fruit Loops, and, uh, FL. And uh, he just realized that he could do music. Thanks to that program and thanks to that synthesizer, I mean, especially through the through, through the through computer, and eventually he became. And I'm not. I, and of course, when I we I work with him, you know, I became one of the absolutely best and most in, uh, intuitive uh, composers, geniuses 
we have today, or had today, unfortunately, passed away in 2018. So I think that what he was able to do with that was fantastic. And I believe that what the new, what AI tools can help, plugins for new, you know, from new, I mean, this, the development is fantastic, I say, because I'm positive to this. And we're going to see, of course, we're going to see a lot of really bad uh, music coming from that, meaning that it's not interesting. But I also believe we're going to see fantastic things coming from creative people that without that, they wouldn't be able to compose music. I mean, today, a lot of music sounds the same. And so it's lately, I think it's only one person or one artist, I think it's Billie Eilish, if you know her, you know, I think she's totally genius together with her brother. What they compose and how the music sounds is something totally different. That's well, why do you think, you think it's a modern problem that a lot of music sounds the same? I think it is a modern problem because today Spotify releases 130,000 songs per day. 365 days a year. So you can imagine how much everything puts out, you know, and everyone tries to for, for also follow a formula. Because previously it was, everything was tailored to radio. That's how you broke a song. But you, anyone below 30 years old that listens to radio today, I don't think so, if, except if you, the kid's going with a mother and father's car. But no one really listens to commercial radio today or to radio at all, you know, state on the radio. So they don't, you don't break songs there. So that's more like they follow up, you know, that's an extension of the, of the development of music. So they have the role to play, but how to break something, you really need to do something different and you know, stand out in the... And, and today the number one uh, tool to break a new song or to come with a song that is better, uh, so there was an old song, a catalog song, that break through today is either to have a big thing and have a, you know, a accidental thing happening on TikTok, or you can have your song in Stranger Things season four, where, you know, a woman, an artist called Kate Bush performed her song Running Up That Hill and became number one on the global chart of Spotify 37 years after its release. I think it's quite, you know, it's quite fascinating. If you ask anyone below 30 years old, did you know about Kate Bush? Or did you know about that song? No, I didn't. What do you think about it? It's fantastic. And I said, it, it was fantastic even before you discovered it, you know? Well, they might, I mean, the crazy thing about music now is they still might not know who she is. They just know the song because they watch the show. Same deal with TikTok. They hear a song mm. in a video, but yeah. they don't necessarily connect it to the artist. No, but they, they, will, they will stream it, and that's, I think it's, that's how that's it enough. starts. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. It's not enough, but it's a good start. Why did you leave the, the world of record labels to, to join Pop House? I, I loved my, my time at you know, the record labels. I had a fantastic uh, management uh, above me and below me, and I was, had a great, you know, yeah, remunerated. And it was, but you know, then again, I, I talk a lot about, you know, um, you know, everyone, if I ask anyone in this room, say, do you love change? You know, every, the most of you, if you, if you, I don't want to embarrass you, raise your hand and say, we love change. But you're not. You know, everyone hates change. You love it when it happens to someone else, but for yourself, you want stability. And uh, what happens is that I try to speak, speak about that a lot of times, and, and then um, I said to myself, you can't use that anymore. I said, you have to say disrupt or die. You know, that's a little bit more, you know, provocative. But I think we are in that change. And I said to myself, I've been in the music business for 25 years, and I had a fantastic stint between 2010 and 14, because then Spotify was born in Sweden, and so did was Pirate Bay, which was killing almost the music industry. And what happened was that if you were big top five, a top 10 in Sweden, you were automatically top 50 on the global chart of Spotify. So, and you know what our people, that's the most listened playlist there are on, on Spotify, the local languages, no, local countries and the global. So for me, I said to our Nordic team, we have a window of opportunity for three years, go all in, sign everything you can, because now Swedish, Norwegian, Danish and, and, and Finnish music can really make it into the top charts. And that's what we did during these years. Yeah, for, for those who haven't seen, there's a Netflix show called The Playlist, I think it is. It's about the origins of Spotify. And the second episode is basically about his fight with the Pirate Bay and then his embrace of Spotify. Um, <laughs> a couple of questions and then we got to go. One, uh, you mentioned Avicii. Avicii and Swedish House Mafia are two other acts that you work with with Pop House. What are the plans for sort of building out their legacies a la ABBA? Yeah. 
so we are we are a company Popas that invest in music uh, catalogs, and we believe and we see today in the in what people listen to. So, 80% of what people listen to today on Spotify is above 18 months old, meaning the catalog is just growing faster and faster, meaning the older music. And we, if we look at the financial part of that, it is, is that if you think of it as a yield business, meaning like a real estate, so you can buy to, a, if say the yield is 5%, meaning it's a multiple of 20, you, you, you have the first step, that's you can buy an asset and put it on the shelf. And then after that, you can just see that the music industry is growing by, by 10 to 12% per year. And then on top of that, what we do, we, we have a private equity take on it. So what we do, we don't do just a financial due diligence. We also do a brand and narrative due diligence. And I mean, we have, we have no, we're the biggest investor in, in ABBA Voyage, uh, but we have own no rights to ABBA. But we run the ABBA Museum in Stockholm. But you know, if you look at what ABBA has done through their career, having stopped doing music 81, they stopped touring 81. 99, they did, you know, they, they, they created the Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia musical, you know? And thanks to that musical, that 65 million people are watching the world, the music was alive, you know? And then came the movie 2008 with Mary Streep and Pierce Brosnan and everyone. And that's how they, and now they're taking a new thing, meaning Abba Voyage, to making it big. And we see that these kind of things you can do all the time, finding catalogs that the kids, the new generation, haven't really been exposed for, and do something great about that and show, show it to them. And thanks to that, you increase you know, the value also in maybe in, in, in 20 times multiple. Multi. They're going to kill me for going over, but there was an audience question that is also a, a poll question that I'm not sure if you're supposed to ask, which is, you've done this with ABBA. If you had to pick one other artist, I assume there's a bunch of people who want to come in and do this. Who, who do you think makes sense to do the next ABBA voyage? <laughs> Well, aren't we over, you know, time? <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, we, of course, that it, it, it is, uh, it's everyone is, not everyone, but a lot of artists want to do this. And uh, I, there's, that's a lot, you know, I, I think, you know, it would be fantastic to take Beatles back, you know, I think it's possible to do that. I didn't put uh, them, I gave them five names. I didn't do the Beatles because too many of them are dead. What do you think of the, here? here but the technique now is that you can do also people that are not alive. Yeah, you can. I mean, there's, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of, of uh, Madonna myself, but you know, but I, 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 I see that, you know. <laughs> you two, I think you should go and see them in the square, you know, in Las Vegas. Here, it's a yeah. crazy show, you know, and you should look it onto YouTube and find, you know, clips from it. It's just the craziest thing. Really, that's, uh, we thank MSG for doing it because, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna help everyone to, in, in the evolution of innovation and everything. I mean, I think, I mean, oh, I th the interesting thing with, sorry for just saying, but, you two stones, Madonna, not Stevie that much, but Elton John. I mean, Elton John just finished his you know, tour. Um, I think they've already been, recently been on stage. So there's a different kind of way of looking into that. Either you take something, transform something. I think what ABBA did was, and what they've done, is going to be you know, the, the uh, 1.0. But of course, there's going to be evolution from that. And this is going to be a, an opera, I mean, a new kind of that, or it's going to be something different in the future. But I just believe that this is really something that's going to come. Uh, it's, we haven't seen, ABBA is not the, the last thing we're going to see on stage. It's going to be others. And, you know, I would love to see everyone, uh, but I also think that to see people and artists live in their own performance. I'm a Bruce Springsteen fan, so I think, and, and you too, and Bruce, and everyone is great. But ABBA and ABBA Voyage in London, Stratford, welcome. <laughs> <laughs>